thank you to Brian for your support on Patreon. Oh, look at this house. Well, I gotta say, I didn't expect you two down here this early. We follow the old coyote around the side of the house, weaving through sagebrush and tumbleweeds. I guess she's fine. It's a bit hot right now, but if we're feeling up to it... Yeah, we just don't have much else to do today. Janice, as far as I can tell, has been acting completely normal. At least, uh, at, I at least expected her to be embarrassed knowing what she'd done for her in front of us. Assuming she remembered it all, I'm fine with never, uh, with not ever bringing it up again, though I'm sure TJ feels the same way. Once we reach the back of Janice's house, I'm amazed to see a pile of tumbleweeds, maybe 10 feet high against the house. The pile sticks out another 5 feet from the wall. Whoa. Janice puts her hands on her hips, looking at the mess. Well, I was right. Been a few years since I got around to doing this. Can't see out the back window anymore. Janice chuggles. TJ claps, clasps his hands and smiles. This won't be hard at all. Just set it on fire. That'll get rid of him. I feel like he's saying that for my sake. It's so hot. I just want to lay down and die right here in the dirt. It'll be pretty quick. That's why I got another job. One of my eye twitches. <laughs> Janice turns to point out towards her backyard. Or at least that would be her backyard if there was a fence or someone separated from the wilderness beyond. See that pile of wood over there? She indicates what indeed a pile of old crumbling wood. Used to be a shed there, been there for God knows how long. You boys might have enough to be with me to buy wood. Janice turns back to the small shack like a boat that is her house. You piled up against the side of the house. I give TJ the dirtiest look I can while he helplessly tries to keep a smile on for Janice. She seals her eyes to give him the sun. Wow, it's real scorcher today. I'll have lemonade made in a few. And with that, Janice heads back around the house, her heavy footsteps crunching through the brush. We're quiet for a few minutes, both staring at the pile of tumbleweeds. She seems okay. I crouch in the dirt, putting my head in my hands. I think she just had an embarrassing moment and acted awkward about it. I do it all the time. I don't say anything. Chase, are you okay? I shake my head silently. It's not that bad. We can do this. I sigh, deciding whether or not I'm actually going to leave TJ and then come back when it's not so hot. <laughs> oh, Jesus. That's when I hear running water. I look up and see a grinning TJ standing at the corner of the house holding up a green hose. <laughs> that he was peeing again? Uh, water trickles out from the middle capped end. I thought I forgot about you and water. I remember every 15 minutes at least. Despite my bad mood, I can't help but smile a little at his continued enthusiasm. I stand up and walk over to the hose, taking it from TJ and letting the icy water run over my head while he looks on approvingly. I have to keep myself from moaning at how good it feels. Once I'm done, I look back at the pile of tumbleweeds. So what are we supposed to do with all these? She didn't tell us where to put them. We'll just throw them off to the side. The wind will take care of them. So we set to work. And the music changes to a very chill and relaxed. It's very nice. You know, it's very like, it's jazzy. <sighs> Janice had at least uh, left gloves for us, so we didn't have to worry about anything sharp going through our hands. I still get poked through my shirt, or even in the face if I pull one out awkwardly. TJ, uh, TJ, I can't help but notice, is a lot faster than I am. He's working at a quick and steady pace, not caring at all when a tumbleweed hits him in the face. I get a few more mes uh, messages from Leo asking where we are. When I tell him, he doesn't reply. Soon enough, I'm sweating buckets, dark circles forming into my arms and around my neck. Ten minutes and I have to take off my shirt, letting it hang on a rusty metal outcrop under the window. Um, I notice TJ giving me sidelong glances after I do. I grin at him. What, enjoying the show? TJ jumps. What? No! TJ quickly looks away again, working faster than ever on the tumbleweeds, which are already half gone at this point. I notice he's got some sweat stain pad, the same sweat stain pattern as I did. You can take yours off too. Feels really good. TJ stops and pants for a while, staring at the rest of the tumbleweeds. I mean, might as well do it now. We still have a ton of wood to move after this. 
<laughs> he flicks his ears and I can see him blushing. Um, are you embarrassed? Don't you shower naked with other dudes at school? Well, yeah, but... But what? DJ huffs and finally pulls off, pulls his shirt off, going over to hang it up next to mine. Chaffee Gaming, thank you for subscribing. I notice that he does it with crossed arms the way girls do. Oh shit. They're happy. What's with you and being all weird about having your shirt off? You, you were the same way this morning. TJ sighs. I was trying not to make it weird, but you two were just staring at me when I opened the door. I laugh and TJ puts his hands on his hips. Just remember that when we're done, we're going to have to check our torsos for ticks, too. Ah, yeah. that dampens my spirits. And this sucks. TJ pants quietly for a few seconds. It is a little hot. So you do admit this was a bad idea? No, I mean... Maybe, but at least we'll have the evening to do something once we finish, right? Ow. He smiles at me, hopefully, and does brighten my mood a little. Want to go to the diner? TJ smiles before bending over towards the tumbleweeds again. Yeah, sure. I was wanting to try the... Ah! I jump a foot in the air, almost falling into the tumbleweeds. Go, go, go! What the fuck? TJ's off like a bullet, running away from the pile in my direction. Confused, I jump out of his way, then follow him around the side of the house as I look where he'd been standing. I don't see anything, but his reaction is enough to get his f the the fur standing up on the back of my neck. The hell? TJ comes to a stop uh, in front of the house. The hell? What happened? Finally catch up to him, panting under the heat. Big Smoke has arrived! Welcome, Big Smoke! Uh, tarantula, oh man! Attack of the Spider, Jude, Jude called it! A reflexive shiver runs up my body and I wring my hands out. No! I'm suddenly very conscious of everything around me, all the little twigs and branches in the sagebrush looking like spiders. Are you sure? Yes! TJ's voice is high-pitched as squeaky as he shakes his hands. I was reaching down for another one, and when I touched it, it moved, and it was a giant freaking spider! He must have been really freaked out. I really hear him use that last word. We both stand there for a minute, and TJ looks towards the back of the house again, biting his lip. There's something a bit off with the way he's acting, though. Maybe he's a little over-exaggerated. I narrow my eyes. Is this another prank? No! TJ looks back at me and shakes his head, his eyes wide. It was right there! It's probably still there now! Dude, you better not be joking around with me on this. It's gonna make, make the rest of the today so much worse. He shivers again, but I'm still suspicious. TJ could be a good actor when he wanted. It was definitely a tarantula. The front door suddenly opens and Janice pokes her head out. Oh my gosh, who are these two handsome men in my yard? The little coyote comes out looking his up and down, especially TJ. That's creepy. Lynx notices and grips an arm with one of his hands as if trying to cover up under her gaze. Mm-hmm, what's all that hollering? I frown at the old coyote's forwardness. Um, I look at TJ, but he didn't want to say anything. TJ says he saw a tarantula. Yeah, he slaps a paw to the side of her face. Well, I'll be darned, a blonde. M maybe, I I've never seen one before. Oh, well, they're all over around here. You just never see them because they only come out at night. Jenna shields her eyes again. This time of day is way too hot for him. It's probably a huntsman. I mean, it was under a bunch of uh, tumbleweeds, so I wouldn't be surprised if it, you know, it had a simulated night. <laughs> All this talk about spiders make me want to just walk the fuck back to the motel right now. I mean, you ain't even get paid for this shit. You should get the fuck out. It wasn't. TJ mumbles next to me, but I don't think Janice hears him. Just wanted to let you know that I made some lemonade and I got some cookies in the oven too. TJ forces a smile onto his face. Ah, oh, thank you, Janice. She grins at him. You're just the most adorable thing. She moves forward to pinch his cheek roughs, and somehow he manages to stay smiling while she does it. Finally, Janice bustles back inside, and as I give TJ a long look, he throws his hands up in the air. I'm not lying! I can see him turning red under his fur, so I leave it at that for now. We look around for a while, but can't find any trace of the spider. 
Getting back to work is difficult, and I keep jumping at the sight of anything long and spindly. Which, if you're clearing out tumbleweeds, is everything! On top of that, I see several smaller spiders, and every time I do, I jump and run a few steps away before I try to shoo them off. I fucking hate spiders, dude. GJ recovers a lot faster, though, and pretty soon he's tossing out tumbleweeds at the same pace he was earlier. Well, that's because he doesn't have a phobia, motherfucker. This makes me even more suspicious. Anyway, it's not a bad sight. TJ's way more in shape than I am. Tight muscles in his back, easily standing out and gl gliding under the fur. I catch myself staring several times, and I'm pretty sure he does too. Uh, once we're almost finished, I have to straighten up, push my hands uh, into my lower back to make it crack. Sore? A little bit. It's sore a lot, though. TJ tosses out one last tumbleweed before waking, walking up to my side. Does it always hurt? He puts a hand on my lower back and starts sliding it around. Uh, I'm not really, just when I'm bending over and stuff. He's quiet for a moment, teasing through the fur on my back. I start to blush, but that's when he applies some pressure to a muscle. I grimace an A arch. Wow, that's stiff. I hiss and try to writhe away, but he puts a hand on my shoulder to hold me in place. He giggles. Hold still for a second. Well, when you're digging in like that, it's because you're all tensed up. Just relax. I try to do as he says, even though it's extremely uncomfortable. So, otters are known for having bad backs. I know, my dad can barely move these days. That's terrible. I shrug. He still gets around, he just needs pain meds. Which you don't want to have to rely on. My shoulder bumps TJ's chest and his long whiskers brush my ear. It's the short legs and long back. Rude. <laughs> you have to bend over more than most of us. Keep a good posture and lift heavy things with your knees. His fingers dance a bit lower before pulling back. You'll thank yourself 20 years from now when you're not in constant pain. I put both of my hands on my back, feeling warm and a lot more loose. I actually do feel a little better. Great! I'm impressed with how much TJ knows about otters. He probably knows the same amount about all the other species, too. I doubt it because he's secretly obsessed with you and he just, he wants, he wants that otter bod, otter bod, otter bod. You know, you're really smart. TJ ducks his head modestly. Oh, I'm just repeating what I've learned. That's what intelligence is. <laughs> I mean, I forget everything I learned within a week. I do so, I do too sometimes. Um, I just have to keep studying until it sticks. And TJ looks around. Actually, I really wish you could lay down somewhere. Then I could give you a real massage. Oh my. That would be amazing. I could give you one tonight when we're back at the motel. You sure? That is me feeling warm, and not just in my back. Of course. I mean, I did sort of drag you out here. Don't worry about it, it's actually kind of nice. Haven't done work like this in a few years. TJ smiles back at me. It is, isn't it? He leans back and stretches, and I have to force myself not to stare at his arching torso. <laughs> I think that's it for the tumbleweeds, though. I look a little forlornly at the pile of boards. Uh, TJ follows my gaze and gives me a sympathetic smile. Remember, with the knees. Uh, TJ smiles brightly as he marches over to the pile. We find out pretty quickly that while there aren't any tarantulas, the ruins of the shed are infested with spiders. Several of them black widows. Because those are actually dangerous compared to blondes, TJ goes in to ask Jenna for her for bug spray. Jenna? I don't think that's the right name. I go back to water myself again with a hose, letting the freezing water run down the sides of my head and off my snout. Fucking spiders, fucking everywhere, fucking, fucking. I shiver again. I've been uptight ever since TJ had faked seeing that tarantula. I stand back up, letting the water run down my back in front, sighing at how good it feels. Something's gonna happen. I hear the front door open and shut and the sound of TJ's footsteps coming around the house. 
Looking back down at the still running hose in my hand, I smirk. TJ did start this little prank war, so I don't feel too bad at what I'm about to do. Oh fuck. Uh, he's gonna he's gonna do some shit. And it ain't gonna be good. Oh, hell. I press myself up against the side of the house, making sure there aren't any spiders first. As I gotta see the lynx's foot stick out from the around the corner, I swing the hose up. He's got cookies or lemonade or something. He's holding something like his phone. He, he mm, you can't no. You, you're fucking. Right. My original intention had been to wet the front of his pants so that it looked like he pissed himself. Unfortunately, he's too far away from the house when said he's left staring at me while an arch water falls short of him by good three feet. Okay, so that's better. <laughs> He's holding stuff, but I don't take the time to see what he's holding before I press my thumb to the opening of the- Aw, oh, damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Did you guess like he just fell, like he fell into ice water and still was back almost tripping? I laugh. Chase, what the heck? What the heck? What the heck? I finally cut this stream water, revealing a fiercely blinking and dripping lynx. One hand is a broom and the other is a plate of what probably used to be cookies. I called it! They look kind of mushy now. <laughs> ah, crap. I told you. You just don't don't prank people. You know, it's not... No, it's not nice. Did you drop the broom to examine the plate of cookies? He tips it to the side and lets a stream of murky, crumb-filled water slosh out from the plate. <laughs> they smell so good, too. Damn it! <laughs> oh, fuck. I'll go over and take the plate from him. Well, the ones at the top aren't so bad. Just a little soggy. DJ wrinkles his nose. Just throw them into the desert. I'd feel bad if Janice saw. I pick up a cookie and take a bite. It's a bit soggy on the surface, but it's warm and gooey in the center. Mmm. She looks at me in horror. Chase! What? It tastes freaking amazing. Quit being so uptight and take a bite. I take another. Stop! What are they? That's irrigation water. That makes me pause for a second, but I shrug. I swallow the water all the time for when, sw when I swam in the lake. I wonder right after I say that if I shouldn't be mentioning the lake at all around TJ. But he just shakes his head. If you start throwing up tonight, then we'll know why. I'll have you take care of me, Doc. But I'll have you to take care of me, Doctor. I don't know much about actually being sick. He watches me anxiously as I take another bite. Still, it really is good. I point at the broom in the dirt. What's with the broom? TJ bends down to pick it up. Janice didn't have any bug spray, so she said to brush off the boards with this. I groan. I was thinking you could do the brushing and I'll do the lifting since your back is sore. I groan. Don't worry, Janice says if we get bit to let her know she can take us to the hospital. Comforting. Yeah, listen, I'm sorry about all this. I didn't know what it was, it was going to be so tough on you. I swallow guiltily. I'm mostly joking. It's really just how spidery it is. The, the, that's the worst part. I'll buy at the diner when we're finished, okay? I smile at him. I'm not hurting for money at all, but I know it'll make TJ better, feel better if I let him. Alright, that's a deal. Oh, it's night time. It's afternoon at this point, and the sun low enough at Janice's house is casting a shadow across the backyard. Of course, that shadow is a good few feet away from where we're working. I set to work trying to sweep away spiders, their egg sacks, and all kinds of other bugs while TJ grabs the big boards and drags them across the yard. I'm pretty bad at it, trying not to yelp while I jerk the end of the room back and forth like an idiot. TJ tells me several times that I can just, I can sit it out, but I'd feel way too guilty if I did. At one point, I almost flick a spider onto TJ, which sends him screaming. And several apologies and nervous laughs later, we're back at it. It takes a lot longer than it should, mainly because of all the sweeping I'm doing. But a few hours later, we're down to the last few boards. Most of what's left is rotting, crumbling wood. TJ wipes a hand across his forehead. Well, I'd say this is the last one. I give the board a cursory brush, happy to not see any spiders on this one. Hey, I was thinking, you want to go on another hike tomorrow? We could invite the others to go with us. Wow, we're volunteering to go on a hike? Definitely not something I would do. DJ looks up at me. You sure? I, I thought you didn't like it. Again, I complain a lot. I had fun. Oh, Jesus. DJ smiles. Well, all right. That'd be awesome. 
He's grinning now, and that makes me feel even better. All right, let's get this done, and we can go get to the diner and plan it out. With that, TJ flips the board and reveals a massive tarantula. God damn it. Oh, God. Eight BD black eyes reflecting the sun as soon as I'm almost blinded by it. They bore into me, and the spider turns slowly, crab-like on its legs so it can face me. Oh, my God. My stomach turns, and the ground tilts. I feel like I'm falling off the edge of the world. I grab for something, anything, but all there is is air around me, and I fall into the darkness. Oh, he passed out. Just count when the shoulders are down, all right? What? Is this wrestling? What? I feel like water's rushing through my ears, and I have to widen my stance to keep from falling. Are you listening? Huh? Chase! What? I try to focus on the kid in front of me. Oh, this is the first time we've ever, like, heard anything from Sydney. Uh, was Sydney a guy or a girl? I don't remember. Did you die or something? It's a kid, so high voice anyway. I don't know. I was just thinking of something else. <laughs> You're dumb. Well, that's nice. You're dumb. I don't feel good. Toby stands there. Wow, and when it's in, in the past, it's Toby. Grew up into TJ. Toby stands there with his arms around his stomach, his ears down. Quit being a baby, Toby. Just one more round. I don't want... Go! Sydney grabs Toby by the shoulders and sticks a leg behind his legs. TJ is so easily tripped that he goes down on his back in the dirt. I get the feeling that the Lynx is purposely losing so he can be done with it. Sydney doesn't like that and tries to pull TJ back up before rolling the Lynx onto his stomach. He yanks on Toby's ears. Ow! I step closer. Okay, Sydney wins! I raise a hand and point at Sydney, just wanting this to stop. Sydney keeps going and grabs a shirt that, uh, that... I, d I don't want to presume anything, and I've, I, I don't know anything about the future of this game, or where it's going, or anything like that, but we're seeing that Sydney is... We've already heard that Sydney is a bit of a bully, uh, and that Sydney is way rougher than the rest, and we know that TJ was the only one to see Sydney go to die. When you're a kid, you don't know... When you're a kid, you sometimes can overlook the severity of your actions. Is it possible that TJ played more of a role in Sydney's death than he's letting on. I'm not saying that TJ murdered Sid Sydney or anything, but more that he maybe could have done something and didn't. I mean, he's very apprehensive about it. There's obviously seems to be that there's more there, more than meets the eye. Cindy keeps going and grabs a shirt in that he'd thrown on the ground earlier and wraps it around Toby's neck. Sydney! Hardcore rules! It's all legal! Fucking ECW. <laughs> Come on! Toby grabs at his neck and his eyes widen at Sydney leans back, pulling Toby's head back with him. Link's arms flail around, his mouth wide open. I stand there confused. It's okay if it's not against the rules. See, as a kid, you don't know the. Sometimes you don't know the severity of the situation. Sydney laughs and leans even further back, looking excited and happy. Toby stares at me with wide, bulging eyes. Stop! I reach forward and grab onto TJ. Chase, Chase, can you hear me? TJ is looking down at me with his eye, wide blue eyes. Toby, I. What? I blink up at him, feeling sick. TJ fuels my head and I s and then stands up and starts pulling me along the ground. <laughs> Shit. 
What are you... Gotta get you inside. He grunts as he pulls me, and, that, and that's when my stomach lurches and I roll over and vomit up the cookies. Mmm. Crap. Crap! I can hear TJ starting to panic, so I grab at him. I have to cough and spit several times before I can speak. Oh, I'm fine. Oh, for you. No, you're not. Can you stand up? Yeah, I'm good. I get up on wobbly but stable enough legs. TJ puts an arm around me. We're calling an ambulance when we begin inside. No, I'm all right. No, you're not all right. This is serious. He starts limping me around towards the front of the house. I should have been keeping an eye on you. TJ's voice cracks and I stop him. Hey, look at me. I'm all right. I look him in the eyes and see tears threatening to spill over. I'm just really hungry and stood up too fast, then got dizzy. TJ looks back at me, studying my face. Just don't call an ambulance for me, not yet at least. I force a laugh. I definitely can't afford that right now. TJ's quiet for a moment then starts pulling me to the front again. We're getting you inside at least. I should never have had you work under this heat. I'm just tired. We should go to the motel instead. Inside now, just in case. Janice is happy to let us sit on the couch for a while, drinking lemonade. TJ doesn't tell her about what happened, but he glances at me every now and then as if worried I'm going to faceplant off the couch. I feel a bit dizzy, but otherwise fine. I keep thinking back to that tarantula, but TJ hasn't said anything about it, so I decide not to bring it up yet. Meanwhile, TJ is making awkward conversation with Janice. I lay my bed head back, hungry and tired. Maybe it's the wood chopping that'll be the hard part. My back is nearly as good as it once was. Oh, yeah, I imagine. I guess I was hoping I could get just a little bit more help. Oh? If you didn't mind, of course. I left my head from the couch to look at TJ. <laughs> I got tomorrow off as well, and I'll, be, and I'll be free to show you what needs to be done if you're willing. TJ stuck it with his mouth open and he smiles. Of course. Damn it, dude. <laughs> I frown. Janice beams at him. You are just a little lifesaver, Tobias. No problem, ma'am. And so proper, too. TJ avoids making eye contact with me, a smile plastered to his face all the while. Janice suddenly turns her gaze at me and I'm forced to wipe that glare off my face. Oh, what are those cookies? Oh, good. They were good, huh, TJ? <laughs> TJ, still smiling, gives a, <laughs> a, a curt nod. Good, good. My secret recipe. She winks at me, and I feel a little uncomfortable because the smile doesn't touch her eyes. Uh-oh. One of those just... <laughs> it's a short walk to the diner, and I berate TJ the entire way. I'm sorry, she just sort of pushed it on me. Well, don't show up. You don't live here. You can just fuck off. Just say, uh, oh, I can't. It just happened. You can always say no. I can't just say no. Or at least that you had other plans. TJ stays quiet and I push up the door to the diner. I was kind of looking forward to hanging out again. She just keeps quiet and then uh, we sit down. So I give up and just lean my head back, eyes closed. It's quiet for a few minutes before TJ finally speaks up. How are you feeling? I rub my eyes gently, a headache now replacing the dizziness that I'd felt earlier. Tired. My head hurts. I really shouldn't have done that. I'm so... S Stop apologizing, please. It's fine. It wasn't the heat. TJ frowns and sits back, looking out the window at the sunset. Sorry, I'm not mad. I just don't want to see you beat yourself up over it, you know? I don't tell him that the, his constant fretting and apologizing is grating on my headache. Well, make sure you try to eat. You might just need energy. Here's hoping. At that moment, a young stag that I vaguely recognize comes up to our table. It's weird seeing someone so young and fresh in Janice's position. Once he gets to our table, though, his eyes light up. Tage? I don't fucking... <laughs> We've never seen this person. TJ sits up suddenly, a big grin spreading across his face. And so this is... <laughs> your replacement for the other person. There's always a plus one. Julian! Julian? It's been a while since I've seen him. He's bigger and so are his antlers. I barely recognize him. 
Julian and Chase to oh <laughs> this is this is a this is a format error that you're seeing right here folks this is a classic format error uh, as depicted in the wild and Chase too what in the world are you two doing here visiting I, I didn't know you had a job here that's pretty that's cool Julian grins <laughs> again a format error in its natural habitat not really but it pays some of the bills at that point, I phased out of the conversation, letting the two of them catch up. JJ had a lot of friends in high school. He had been technically popular. It's a good few minutes before the stack finally takes our orders. Since Julian bustles off to another table, TJ grins at me. Julian low-key cockblogging. <laughs> oh man, it's great to see him again. Yeah, that's cool. With the stag gone, the awkward silence quickly closes in on us again. I'm too tired to do much about it, though. I lean my head back again, closing my eyes, feeling like I might fall asleep right there. So... I open them and see TJ looking at me before quickly looking looks away again. What? Um... He fiddles with the stack of napkins. You called me Toby earlier. Did I? But I remember, even as I say it. Yeah. Today forces a laugh. <laughs> it's been years since you called me that. Yeah. We're quiet for a moment. So, why'd you call me that? I don't know. Guess I was just a little loopy after passing out. Ah. Uh, See him eye, I eye him carefully. Do you mind if I call you that? Uh, TJ is fine. So, yes. I study TJ. The way he's sort of hunched in on himself, ears twitching. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I go back and forth between deciding if I should bring up the whole Flynn incident or not. Despite his best efforts, TJ isn't fooling anyone that he's bothered by what happened. Of course he would be. Do you, you want to talk about what happened on Monday? TJ's quiet and I kick myself. I've given him a little more. I've given a little more time. I've given. I'm given a little more time to think of what I'm going to say next as Julian brings our food and strikes up another conversation. TJ again is able to easily sip into a smile and chat away with the stag. The smell of a burger has my mouth watering and incredible when I take a bite. It's striking how easy it is for TJ to just put on a smile and act cheerful. It makes me wonder how much of it is actually genuine. It's almost, I'm almost halfway done with my burger by the time Julian is angrily called back to the kitchen by the cook. DJ goes quiet again and starts plucking at his salad. I swallow and set down my burger, my stomach turning a bit, uh, what, what I'm planning to say. I was thinking about this before we got here. About what? That maybe we could use the time we have here to remember what happened and to find... TJ finally looks at me, and the sadness I see in his eyes makes my heart plummet. Find closure? TJ's quiet, staring at his salad. I don't know, man. I, I just know how bad it is for you, still. And, and I just want to figure out how he can... Search for the right words. Be at peace with it. TJ's still quiet. I don't know, man. I finally say and slump up in my booth, feeling like I ruined the evening. How would we do that? His tone is shaky, but genuinely curious. I don't know. Talk about it? Talk about it with the others? Not Flynn, just the others. JJ looks out the window again. Maybe even go to the lake? Talk about it there? I don't know. I almost choke on the word lake, still worried about saying it in front of TJ. Maybe. Maybe? TJ sighs and finally looks at me with a small smile. Maybe. But right now, I just want to hang out with you and have a good time, okay? Okay. So stop being so angry. It's making me sad. I pick up my burger, my stomach loosening up enough that I feel like I can eat again. Sorry, I was just looking forward to... And stop apologizing. He says it with a smirk, 
and then almost immediately frowns. I mean, I'm sorry that was rude. I laugh at him, and he smiles back. I take another bite and look out the window. I feel a lot better now, and... Yeah. I feel a lot better now, and now I'm pretty sure I only passed out because I didn't have any food in me. By the way, did you ever see that tarantula again after the first time you saw it? TJ shudders. Ugh, no, thank goodness. Look out the window at the brilliant sunset. Uh, that's good. He tries to walk away from me, but I kick him in his lower back and he goes stumbling forward onto his knees. What the shit? He stays there, not bothering to move at all. I glare at the back of his head, breathing hard. How does it feel when it's happening to you? My voice shakes as I yell at him. I'm not used to doing anything like this. It felt so... gross. But at the same time, I feel like I'm finally teaching him a lesson. He's had this coming for so long. Why are you always so mean to him? He doesn't answer and sits slowly getting up <laughs> to his feet, wiping his face with the back of his hand. I told him to come out here to make one of his treasure hunts so, so I could confront him like this. It's not going how I thought it would, though. He's just standing there, not saying anything. Finally, he starts to walk away again, shoulders slumped, ears and tail down. I feel another burst of anger following him. I quickly overtake his slow pace and shove him as hard as I can in the back. His head snaps back before he falls flat on his stomach on the ground. He stays there for a long, long time while I stare at him. I can't remember what happened after that. Damn. Well, I hate to tell you guys, but given the length of these days, I'm thinking we're going to go ahead and uh, stop it here. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I have been the trained unprofessional, speaking for the voices in my head when I say until next time, fare thee well. Bye, everyone. <laughs>